Hi all. In this video, we're going to see about megaloblastic anemia. So this question can be asked as an essay question. So we'll see a sample essay question. A 28-year-old female patient, Mrs. Deepa, visit a physician with complaints of extreme tiredness over the past six months. She has become breathless on exertion in the past few days. Her feet have become feet have become numb, and she has started to become unsteady. On examination, her conjunctiva was pale and pulse rate is 114 beats per minute. She has a sensory loss in a glove and stocking distribution with severe loss of joint position sense. So as you can see, in this question, apart from the normal features of anemia, we've got some other features also. Like the feet has become numb, she has become unsteady, she has got a sensory loss in the glove and stocking distribution and severe loss of joint position sense. So this would be the picture of a megaloblastic anemia. That is, you will have neurological symptoms along with cardiovascular symptoms. So we'll see more about this type of anemia. So megaloblastic anemia, as the name suggests, it is characterized by abnormally large erythrocytes, or in other words, macrocytes. So as shown in this image, you can see that you've got bigger cells when compared to the other one. So that is why it is called macrocyte. Now, why do we have macrocytes? because it is caused by defective DNA synthesis. How defective DNA synthesis is produced, we will see in a short while. The main cause of megaloblastic anemia is deficiency of vitamin B12 and or, or deficiency of folic acid. So megaloblastic anemia can be due to either deficiency of vitamin B12 or deficiency of folic acid. So what is the role of vitamin B12 and folic acid in this uh, RBC production? So see, in order for proper DNA synthesis and proper division of RBCs in erythropoiesis, we need to have a compound called tetrahydrofolate. So methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is our folic acid, must be converted to tetrahydrofolate. And for this, we need our vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, which is cobalamin, gets converted to methyl cobalamin in that process. So in other words, it is vitamin B12 which activates our folic acid to form the active tetrahydrofolate. When cobalamin is converted to methyl cobalamin, simultaneously we've got conversion of homocysteine to methionine. So suppose there is no vitamin B12. What will happen? This cobalamin is not there. So will there be activation of tetrahydrofolate? No. So tetrahydrofolate will not be there. And this tetrahydrofolate is actually required for synthesis of thymine. You know, thymine is a nucleic acid present in DNA. So when thymine is not there, the DNA replication is slowed. Thus what happens, there will be lesser mitosis and thus there will be larger RBCs. So because it is because of mitosis that the cells become smaller and smaller. In this case, because the DNA replication is slowed, there is lesser mitosis, which in case will produce larger RBCs, otherwise called macrocytes. So that is why we have macrocytes in case of folic acid or vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay. So now we will see the causes of vitamin B12 deficiency. So this is an uh, image showing how vitamin B12 is absorbed in the body. So when we have vitamin B12, it combines with a factor called intrinsic factor which is produced by the parietal cells. So the intrinsic factor combines with vitamin B12 and ultimately when it reaches the terminal ileum, the vitamin B12 will combine to a receptor called cubulin and is then transported in the blood via transcobalamin 2. So what are the causes of vitamin B12 deficiency? So suppose you have decreased dietary intake of vitamin B12. So obviously you will have deficiency. Now suppose there are some gastric causes. For example, you have uh, atrophic gastritis. So you have decreased number of parietal cells and thus decreased amount of in, uh, intrinsic factor. So in that case also vitamin B12 cannot be absorbed properly. Not only that, there are some autoimmune conditions in which there are antibodies against the intrinsic factor. So in that case also you will not have enough intrinsic factor for vitamin B12 to be absorbed. And finally, if there is gastrectomy, you don't, you don't have parietal cells, so you don't have intrinsic factor. So obviously you don't have absorption of vitamin B12. So these are different gastric causes by which you have vitamin B12 deficiency. And finally, there can be some intestinal causes which is leading to decreased absorption of vitamin B12. So we will elaborate on uh, examples of each of these. 
so the cause of inadequate dietary intake intake may be because the person is strict vegetarians or they are uh, breastfed infants gastric causes as i mentioned includes autoimmune failure of intrinsic factor see that is also called pernicious anemia or edinsonian pernicious anemia then gastrectomy and atrophic gastritis intestinal causes include tropical sprue ileal resection crohn's disease fish tapeworm infestation and intestinal blight loop syndrome so uh, try to memorize the basic reasons for vitamin b12 deficiency what about folic acid so here also we've got a number of reasons for folic acid deficiency but in this case it is somewhat direct so suppose you have inadequate dietary intake as in case of poor intake of vegetables you have folic acid deficiency now even if you intake folic acid has to be absorbed properly so suppose you've got a malabsorption as in case of celiac disease tropical sprue crohn's disease in that case you can have folate deficiency suppose you got increased demand that means body needs more folic acid than you are eating what 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 are the examples of such conditions where you have increased demand like pregnancy lactation infancy or in cases of hemolysis and malignancies in that case you have you need more folic acid than is required in that case also you can have megaloblastic anemia then certain drugs can uh, affect the absorption of folic acid like anticonvulsants contraceptive and cytotoxic drugs and there are other factors like excessive urine folate loss active liver disease and congestive heart heart, heart failure so these are different causes of folate deficiency which in turn will cause megaloblastic anemia so what are the symptoms of megaloblastic anemia so the most common symptoms are malaise the person will be tired they not feel, feel like doing anything the person will be breathless that means there will be exertion breathlessness for about 50% of the patients you can have paresthesia in a glove and stocking manner so see it is the hands and the feet that will be uh, involved earlier so that is why it is called paresthesia in a glove and stocking model and you can also have weight loss along with these symptoms you can also have poor memory depression personality changes hallucinations and visual disturbances so these are the different clinical features of megaloblastic anemia what about the signs so as when you check the patient you can see that the person will have a glossitis that means they'll have a smooth tongue they can have an angular keelitis which is basically a lesion at the angle of mouth and they can also have skin pigmentation and vitiligo these are other specific features of megaloblastic anemia so now here comes a physiological basis question in vitamin b12 deficiency but not folate deficiency is associated with neurological disease why see in the question that i shown i i specifically said that the patient had neurological symptoms along with cardiovascular symptoms but the thing is if the person has folic acid deficiency alone the person will not have neurological symptoms it is only in vitamin b12 deficiency that they have neurological disease why see the reason is vitamin b12 is a cofactor for one more reaction see methyl malonyl coa to be converted to succinyl coa you need cobalamin so when there is a deficiency of vitamin b12 this reaction does not take place which will lead to accumulation of methyl malonic acid now this methyl malonic acid is responsible for demyelination of the dorsal column and lateral spinothalamic tract and thus it causes neurological symptoms so see it is the accumulation of methyl malonic acid that triggers demyelination and thereby cause neurological symptoms in vitamin b12 deficiency but this phenomenon does not occur in folate deficiency okay so both vitamin b12 and folic acid is required for dna synthesis and thus they cause macrocytes but only vitamin b12 will cause neurological symptoms so i hope that concept is clear so see these are the different symptoms that are associated neurological symptoms that are associated with vitamin b12 deficiency you will have glove and stocking paresthesia and also there will be loss of ankle reflexes in the spinal cord you can uh, you can see a condition called subacute combined degeneration especially of the dorsal column pathway so thus the vibration fine touch extra will be lost that is why in our question we said the person was unsteady and the person had lost the joint position sense that means is uh, he or she has got no idea of what the position of the, their joints is okay so that is because of degeneration subacute combined degeneration especially affecting the dorsal column or posterior column pathways now in the cerebrum you can have dementia and optic atrophy 
that is the cause for visual disturbances in vitamin B12 deficiency and you can also have autonomic neuropathy. So these are the different neurological symptoms that you can expect in vitamin B12 deficiency. Moving on, what are the features or lab investigations that you can see in, uh, uh, that you can uh, do in megaloblastic anemia? So when you check the blood picture and the red cell indices, obviously the hemoglobin is going to be low because it is an anemia. And what about the red, red cell indices? See the MCV that is mean corpuscular volume will be increased. The normal is 78 to 94 but will be increased in the range of 95 to even 160 micrometer cube. MCH also increases. MCS is usually normal but can decrease in later stages. So this is how the blood picture and the red cell indices will look like. What about the peripheral smear? The peripheral smear you can get. Obviously you will get macrocytes like this. Okay. And one more important feature that you can see is hypersegmented neutrophils. Okay. So this question can be asked as an MCQ. Hypersegmented neutrophils are found in megaloblastic anemia. The reticulocyte increase count increases to more than 5 percentage. Why? See when there is anemia the bone marrow will try to replace or it will try to stimulate the erythropoiesis but in this case because the turnover is more there will be more amount of immature cells in the peripheral sphere that is why reticulocyte count will be increased to more than 5 percentage in almost all types of anemia and the rbc lifespan is decreased and wbc and platelets are decreased due to encroachment of megaloblastic tissue just like in other anemias, the bone marrow will, will now be concentrating more on erythropoiesis and thus WBC and platelets will be decreased. So what about the bone marrow picture? In the bone marrow, you will see a megaloblastic hyperplasia. That means there will be hypercellularity. See, you can see when, when you see this slide, it will be clear that there are a lot of cells. So there will be hypercellularity. There will be erythroid hyperplasia. What is erythroid hyperplasia? Usually, when we uh, take the ratio of myeloid to erythroid cells, actually myeloid cells are more in the bone marrow when compared to the erythroid. But, it, but in cases of anemia, the bone marrow will try to produce more RBCs. So there will be erythroid hyperplasia. There will be a shift to um, the erythroid series and there'll be maturation for maturation also there will be left shift in maturation. Moreover, you can see a particular finding in the marrow iron findings, you will see that on Prussian blue stainings, there is increased number and size of iron granules in the erythroid precursors. That is also a characteristic feature seen in the bone marrow. So as you can see here in the Prussian blue staining, you can see that the iron granules are increased in number and size in the erythroid precursors. Okay, so that completes the bone marrow picture. Now what are the different biochemical findings in megaloblastic anemia? So see the serum vitamin B12 will obviously be decreased in vitamin B12 deficiency and serum folate level will be decreased in folic acid deficiency. Actually red cell folate is a more reliable indicator of tissue, tissue stores of folate which is decreased in folic acid deficiency. So see in folic acid deficiency rather than serum folate we, we have to check the red cell folate which is a more reliable indicator. Okay. So serum vitamin B12, serum folate bar red cell folate. Okay. You can also check for the serum bilirubin. Why? See, here we've got excessive RBC destruction, which in turn will cause increased bilirubin. So it increases to more than 1 milligram per deciliter. There will be increased urine urobilinogen because due to increased amount of serum bilirubin. And what about serum iron and ferritin? It is usually increased because here the RBCs are immature. They are not mature enough to utilize the iron. So that is why serum iron and ferritin is usually increased. That is also seen in our bone marrow finding. We said that the iron granules are more, no? So this is a characteristic difference between uh, iron deficiency anemia and megaloblastic anemia. Here the iron is not utilized properly, okay? Now we also should know about pernicious anemia. Now pernicious anemia is a type of megaloblastic anemia. It's just that it's, this one has got a definite cause. So pernicious anemia is an organ specific autoimmune disorder in which gastric mucus is atrophic with the loss of parietal cells causing intrinsic factor deficiency. See we said that for vitamin B12 absorption we need intrinsic factor but intrinsic factor is to be produced from parietal cells. So in conditions in which this intrinsic factor is affected due to an autoimmune cause you've got antibodies against intrinsic factor. In such cases that is called pernicious anemia. Okay. So here there is failure of intrinsic factor secretion due to autoimmune atrophy of gastric mucosa. 
so it's an autoimmune disease with anti intrinsic factor antibodies in more than 50% of the cases you will have this anti intrinsic factor antibodies it is common in females between the age of 45 and 65 okay so pernicious anemia is a type of megaloblastic anemia in which there is failure of intrinsic factor secretion due to autoimmune atrophy of gastric mucosa and in the lab investigations you will have this anti intrinsic factor antibodies so what are the investigations that you will do again because it has all the features of megaloblastic anemia you can do the blood picture as well as the red cell indices the bone marrow and the peripheral smear specifically you have to look for anti intrinsic factor antibodies here you will also you can also do another test called schilling's test so schilling's test is a test in in which we basically test the absorption of vitamin b12 and see whether it is corrected by intrinsic factor so i'll explain that see this test is obsolete it is not done nowadays but from an academic point of view we'll just be familiar of what this schilling test is so in schilling's test we initially give an inject injection of non radioactive vitamin b12 that is to fill up any uh, vitamin b12 depleted stores and then we give a radioactive ingested vitamin b12 okay and then we check for the urine samples so basically if the person has an intrinsic factor deficiency you can trace out whether the radioactive b12 is absorbed or not normally if the intrinsic factor is normal then this radioactive b12 will be absorbed by the body and that can be seen in the urine samples now if the person does not have intrinsic factor in the urine there will not be any radioactive vitamin b12 so this test helps to know if the person has pernicious anemia or not but this is not used nowadays okay so what is the management of megaloblastic anemia in general so if the person has a vitamin b12 deficiency you have to treat it by hydroxycobalamin and if it is a folate deficiency you can treat it by oral folic acid okay so that will complete our a brief comprehensive overview about megaloblastic anemia you can expect physiological basis questions mcqs or even essay questions from this part so i hope the concept is clear thank you